Hi everybody, I'm Bill Little here with Steve Green and Scott Ott, and this is your Right Angle Show, made possible by you find members over at BillLittle.com. Well, I think by now, those of you who know the work I do, the story is so old that it's just completely stale and lifeless, and I'm not going to go and tell the whole thing anyway, but suffice it to say that the absolute turning point of my life was watching the Thunderbirds in about 1965 flying F-100Ds. I dropped my ice cream cone, and I decided that's what I wanted to do. Ended up in the theater, of course, but if you look at all the work I do, eject, 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 afterburner, firewall, all of these things, it's a stratosphere lounge. It's all, a, a, it's all really just to look back at that incredible moment when I first saw those jets flying. I said, that's what I want to do with my life. So imagine my uh, shock and awe and horror when we find that now the Thunderbirds are having a problem that we didn't have before. Brigadier General Christopher Short, commander of the 57th Wing at Nellis Air Force Base in Nevada, said in an email last month, that of the 15 pilot applicants for three openings, 14 of them are white. I'm asking for your help in finding the right pilots for next year's Thunderbirds team is how General Short begins his email. While we have several qualified candidates that many of you submitted, I am lacking depth and talent we've seen in previous years and I am lacking in diversity of gender, ethnicity, and aircraft type background, wrote General Short. So this is a subject near and dear to my heart, and I thought it would be an excellent idea and an excellent premise to talk about this idea of set-asides, quotas, and all the rest. Here's the basic case. On one hand, and this was certainly my first reaction, the Thunderbirds should be the best seven pilots in the Air Force. They should be the best seven. And the overwhelming majority of fighter pilots is, is white males. So it's not a surprise that 14 out of 15 of them were white males. If you start looking for the best black fighter pilot or the best woman fighter pilot or the best Asian fighter pilot or whatever, you're no longer picking the best seven people. I have a real problem with that. Now, conversely, the Air Force Thunderbirds are there to recruit people. So let's take a look at this issue because I think this is really what it comes down to. Uh, Steve, mm -hmm. let's go to the first, the first side of this case here. Do you, think that it's, uh, do you think that it's wise to have people entrusting their lives to people who are not on the first round, maybe not even on the second or third round? And what do you think that does to Air Force morale, especially in a team as tight as the Thunderbirds? You know, this is, this. I love this issue because it's not an easy one. It gives you so many avenues to explore in this thing. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the second thing I thought about, I'm going to get to first. Uh, I remember reading uh, uh, Band of Brothers years ago, the, uh, the history Easy Company, the, 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 para, you know, the, the paratroopers in uh, World War II. They were there at D-Day. They were there at the, you know, the, the, the bridge too right. far. They were there at uh, Bastogne. Amazing guys. And doing interviews with them, almost all of them said the same thing about why they wanted to be paratroopers. They said, if I have to share a foxhole with somebody else, I want it to be with the best soldier I can find. I want to be among the best. Not for a macho thing, but as a self-preservation thing. You want, to, sure. you want to have the best trained, most fit, sharpest operating comrade by your side you can possibly have. And these guys, you know, they, they got chewed up in battle, absolutely chewed up, but you could depend on them because they had that attitude. I want to be with the best because they are the best. And that's that's an amazing thing. That builds amazing camaraderie. On the other hand, as you say, the Air Force is uh, uh, an institution that needs to recruit. And uh, I remember reading, I believe this was uh, Thomas Saul years and years ago, he said it's no surprise that groups of people are alike because groups of people are alike. That's how we group them together. Uh, so when you're recruiting, you know, if, 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 if you're a kid and you see this all-white team, you might think the Air Force isn't for me. Well, what if that kid has the potential to be one of the best Air Force pilots ever, but he's turned away because what he sees doesn't look like him. He is he's kind of self-selecting out of that group that doesn't make him think, you know, I want to be a part of that because a part of that is is already me. So where do you draw that line between uh, between competency, being the best of the best, and drawing the best out of the general population? It's a really tough line to draw. I hope, I hope the Air Force gets this right because we know what happened to the Thunderbirds back, I think yeah, it was in the right. 90s. When the when the team leader plowed into the ground, whether it was a, a pilot error or an instrument malfunction, I don't know. But his entire team plowed right into the ground with him because when you're a Thunderbird, you don't watch the sky. You don't watch your instruments. You watch the wingtips of the guy next to you, and that guy had better be pretty That's damn good. That's exactly right. 
Scotty, let's talk about the other side of this. You know, when they say that there are 15 applicants, narrowed down to 15 applicants, there were a lot more than that. The final, the final 15 were being selected for three slots open on the team, and 14 of the 15 of these guys were white. So on one level, you can say, yes, if you go and start recruiting, you're, if, you're, if you're specifically now looking for a black fighter pilot, a woman fighter pilot, Hispanic fighter pilot, or an or a Asian fighter pilot, or whatever, you're not taking the best of the 15 pilots. However, the Thunderbirds are not there to fly combat missions, and the Thunderbirds are not there to, uh, to launch air raids on, on, on anything. The, com the Thunderbirds are there to get people to join the Air Force. Sure worked on me. What the, the fact of the matter is there are probably hundreds of pilots in the Air Force that could fly in the Thunderbirds that have the technical skill. So what's your position on this? Do you go for the excellence or do you go for the diversity in, in, in terms of the woman that they had for a couple of years, just leaving now, by far had the longest lines in front of her after the show? Yeah, I, I think it's a false dichotomy. And, you know, I'm actually picturing a young five-year-old Willie Billy Whittle, Whittle. Um, standing there. It's never Willie Whittle. Hat. Billy Whittle <laughs> with a strawberry ice cream cone. So, that's an image I didn't See, need. See, if, we if we were in the same room, that would spawn a fist fight, I'm sure. Uh, but I could see, you know, young Bill Whittle standing there and, you know, turning to his friends, family, brothers, sisters, parents, or whatever, and say, hey, you see that white guy over there with that jet? I want to grow up to be like him. And look, I'm white, too. I could do this. <laughs> so, I, you know, there's a certain bit of comedy in this whole thing to say, well, you know, I, I'm not sure that that final selection pool of 15 included any Wiccans, any bigamists or any blind people. <laughs> and, you know, especially the blind have been unfairly excluded from the Thunderbolt, you know, the Blue Angels and the Thunderbolt Corps. I think that you can have both. First of all, um, I think you, you narrow down the pool of potential pilots, which, you know, you're only going to select three. You narrow down that pool by competence alone. Now, in that final pool of the competent, I don't know if there's 100, 200, 1,000, or, or 15, but you would think that there would be some diversity in that pool, assuming that the Air Force's process is not a... Uh, a prejudiced one to begin with that is not a bigoted one to begin with it's not discriminatory so that you get to that point and then you say okay here we have the final 15 uh people and uh from this um we're obviously we want a, the kid from the inner city to look up and go yeah i could be a i could be a jet pilot too now do i think that's the ultimate solution no i think that i get this crazy dream that one day a man will be judged not by the color of his skin, but by the content of his character, and we won't even notice crap like this. But as long as we're noticing it, and frankly, as long as the left is pushing it on us, um, I, I don't think it hurts to say, you know, we had 100 to choose from. Uh, here's the Asian pilot. Here's the female, a couple of females. Here's the black guy. Here's the Hispanic guy. I, I don't really see a well, huge I'm glad you mentioned little Billy uh, Whittle sitting out there at five years old with his uh, strawberry ice cream cone at McKinley Air Force Base watching the Thunderbirds. Because it's you, you just hinted at it. It was the Jets. I just saw the Jets. I went up and, 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 right, and yeah. talked to the guys afterwards, but that's not what I was there for. And it wasn't the guys that put me on them. It was the flying. It was the just the raw power, the sound, the magnificence of it. So I actually have, I actually come down on this in a, in a couple different ways. On one hand, the diversity argument, since it is a recruiting goal, is, an, is actually a very good argument. You do want people to think that maybe people who feel excluded because of their race or their, or their gender, you don't want them to feel excluded. You want women to say, well, yeah, girls come up to, and yeah, she's a, she's, a, she's a Thunderbird. That's great. And all the rest of it. So there's that. But the other part of it is not so much that I'm worried about the standards of the Thunderbirds, not so much that I'm worried that, that if they widen the pool to get the diversity they want, that they're going to have more accidents, because I think there's large numbers of the top of the crop that can, can probably pull this off. I'm concerned about two things. First of all, I'm concerned about the, the internal morale of the team. Up until this point, the Thunderbirds and the Blue Angels winnow out from the Navy and the Air Force the best 15 people there are, and of the best 15 people there are, they pick two or three or four. And I am a little concerned that if you basically tell these people, it's not going to be the best 15 anymore. Now it's going to be the best 100 and, or, or 200, and we're going to pick this person because of their, the way they look, and we're going to pick that person because of the way they look. I'm genuinely concerned about what that would do to team morale. But I think there's a bigger issue here, and that is, well, two bigger issues. One of them is 
it's kind of like the thing we had with the Oscars, right? Where where the Oscars were too white, uh, so we need to we need to have like we need to have more diversity in the Oscar selection. That really basically means you're winning the Academy Award for Best Black Actor. I think that's insulting. It's insulting to black yeah. people, and I think it's insulting yes. to to people to say that if you can't make it into the top seven, then it's degrading to to the people that end up doing it. You you would like to think that one of the or two of the best seven or 15 are in fact women or blacks or hispanics whatever else you're looking for and you don't have to make compromises that means excellence that's the world i'm looking for and the final thing i'll close on is to say this uh general short also mentioned that the number of applicants is down significantly this year just the number of applicants and i kind of think that the reason the number of applicants is down is because of this kind of thing in the military I've heard from, from people who commanded uh, Green Beret regiments. I've talked to people who've been uh, chief petty officers for 25 years. And I have heard from l scores of people that I know personally that say that the military is no longer about fighting and winning. It's about um, diversity. It's about uh, gender acceptance. It's about having the greenest Air Force base in the country rather than the most you know, flight ready Air Force base in the country. Oh, yeah. And people who go wow. into this business and risk their lives to become warriors are finding out more and more that because of things like this, it's no longer about being a warrior. I understand the need for a diverse Thunderbird team, but I would like to be a part of the Thunderbirds because I'd like to have the conceit that I'm one of the seven best pilots in the Air Force, not one of the seven best pilots of a certain skin color in the Air Force. It's a tough one, but I certainly don't like the trend lines. Anyway, on behalf of everybody here at Right Angle, I'm Bill Whittle. Thanks very much for joining us. And remember, these shows are made possible by memberships at BillWhittle.com. So if you can do it, we sure would appreciate it. For Steve Green, Scott Ott, and the rest of the uh, Right Angle team, which I, well, there's pretty much three of us and somebody in the back room, uh, I'm Bill Whittle. We'll see you next time. <laughs>